global law trials. Does everyone know what they are? Or some can someone battle start adding them off for us? Yeah, so that's the big one, so we'll get into that one scrum a little bit later. Scrum, 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 scrum feed, feed yeah. So could we set up two props for us please? <laughs> oh, you. And a half back. So, before last year, oh, so God. If, if there was on this side, you would have to stand in the middle of the tunnel. Correct? Yep, last year. This, this year, he can stand with his shoulder in line with the tunnel. So, it's basically a step to his side of the team with the ball, part of the ball still touching the tunnel when he puts it in. Easy. Put that's the one of the easier ones. Down, really, so middle of the tunnel. So that's all right. Between the two heads. <coughs> so you guys go bind up. So you obviously you got your tunnel through the middle. <coughs> that part of the ball has to somehow touch the middle of the ball. Like touch so the middle of the tunnel. So the ball, some part of the ball has to touch the middle of the tunnel. Which is the same as last year. Same as last year. But yeah. The, the halfback just has to stand shoulder to the tunnel. So easy. So what would that do to us in terms of enforcing compliance from the halfback just to put the ball in straight? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, half this room didn't know that, so yeah. I imagine ninety-nine percent of our players don't know. Yeah. I think the effect, the effect is that the ball for going straight. Correct. That was and the message. Aside from the fact that it's supposed to touch the part, part of the ball, supposed to touch the middle line. In reality, it's going in under your own teams. Under his side. It's going in straight. What they used to do is they used to stand on this side. Of so it's going through the middle, yeah. but it's on the to their side. Which, so now they can't do that anymore. Which then yeah. makes it easier to comply with the part of the law that says the ball must be caught. There you go. Which leads us on to the next one. So the hooker has to. No, no, Keep going. Halfback. So this year we don't have to tell the halfback when to put the ball in. So last year we had to signal him, tap him, whatever you had to do to get him to put the ball in when it was stable. Now he just puts it in when it's stable. <coughs> the other one is the hooker or someone in the front row has to hook for the ball. They can't just be laying in the middle of the scrum. Anyone so, in the front row, anyone in the front row yeah. can hook the ball. Yeah. So anyone in the front row can hook the ball, hook the ball, but someone from the feeding team has to. And, it's, and what's so it? What? So that's to avoid what we had last year in I think one or two Six Nations tests where the ball was rolled in and then it just sat in the middle and nobody was prepared to strike for it for fear of destabilising their scrum. So it just sat there. So now because the halfback's positioned closer to your side, there's no excuse now to not strike for the ball. Uh, you, you just, you should, you, I would use some sort of call that indicates to somebody in the feeding team's front row, if you don't strike for the ball, I will free kick you. Yeah. Which is kind of depowers one scrum when they football. But some global trial laws have been introduced to accommodate the fact that they're going to be under pressure. And we're going to talk about those now. Cool. So the ruck is probably the main one, and the bigger one. Number eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number eight can pick the ball up. He can reach out and pick the ball up. Doesn't have to come to his feet to pick it up. Now the ruck. Just really got to take the um, So everyone's here has been involved with sevens during the summer. 
um, this came into effect on the 1st of January, but we did play it in the regional sevens last year. So um, two more volunteers, please. A couple more volunteers. Different volunteers. <laughs> so you got a ball carrier. You have, oh, I need a couple more, please. So you have a ball carrier. Tanika's going to be the attack on the attacking team. Rory is going to be our tackler. So Rory's nation. Nice. So if we're going this way. <laughs> <laughs> I said tackle, don't try to do something. Yeah, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go now. Wait, what's the link? We'll, uh, we'll just move on next to see, mate. Yeah. Sweet, yeah. Okay, so we've got a tackle. Correct? <coughs> Rory's, if he ends up on the other side of the, this tackle, so you end up facing the other way, Rory. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what is his responsibilities now? Get up and well, clear. And come back for him. Yeah, so he's got to roll away, and if he wants to have a crack at the ball, what does he have to do now? Come in through the gate. And where is the gate? We do this. Tackle play. Tackle play. Tackle Correct, so we have a gate here. We're going to take it to him. And then his camp's get on the side. Correct? Yep. So he's to come back around through the gate. Go for the ball. How, how does that differ from last year? So, so if you go into that position, you would to start off with. Yep. No, you start off with. You tackle. Yeah. Right. So last year he could just stand up and play the ball from there. This year, you blue guy, more trials, he used to come around. So if Tanika comes in over the top to support Cam and your attacking team, what do we have there? What did we have last year? Tackle only. Last year that's a tackle only, which meant there were no offside lines. What is it now? Which means there are offside lines. Beautiful. And if Tanika was on the defending team and she did exactly the same thing, Ruck. And what do we get with, when we have a ruck? Well, if she came in and played that ball straight away, it wouldn't be yep. a ruck. So if she yes, was, it would. It would then? Yep. Be yes. But so what happens is if Tanika's hands are on, you get two people at the same time, what have you got there? You got uh, competition for the ball? Correct. Or a ruck? No, you got competition for the ball. So who's allowed to play that? Who's allowed to use their hands in that scenario? Anyone on their feet going to go? Who? Who got there first? Well, if you both hit, hit it at the same time, that's a competition for the ball. Correct. So what would you do? Play on. Well, say leave it, it's not coming free. Well, think about it. What, what are we trying to encourage? If two players are... If, if two players are... Ignore the people on the ground. If two players arrived simultaneously for that and competed for the ball, what should the referee do? Yeah. yeah. Do nothing. All right, do nothing. How long? <coughs> what one knee is? Going over the ball, she got her hands on it. Yes. Yep. How long is she allowed to go for it? Forever. 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 She's, she's allowed, yeah. to, keep she's allowed to keep going yeah. okay. until she until she either wins the ball, wins the penalty, or uh, or doesn't survive the cleanout. If, so if, if her hands come off it, she can't go back. In Correct. Because she's created the ruck. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So she so, touched the ball. Yeah. yeah. So Tanika go over the ball? As a defender. No, 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 where you were, as a defender. So she's, she's the jackler, basically. She gets there first, she does a good Sam Kane, gets her hands on the ball. That's a ruck for the purposes of offside lines. So how, can you clarify, is the ruck all changed? You don't need to. Correct. Yes. That's why we're talking about it. I told you not to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I just summarise what I think you just said. Yep. 
So <laughs> let's say, so Roy's there, he's rolling away, whatever. Yeah. I've, I've been tackled, I'm on the ground, there's no one else in Kui. Correct. Tanika so comes through, picks up the ball, just yes. down straight ahead, straight, straight like she touched it for a second and was out of there. Yeah. Is that still crack offside once? Yep, instantly yeah. and then gone. So, so you watch you know, that ball, and I'll Does, just to clarify, does, if I'm attacking, and I'm the first one there, and then just come through, pick up the ball, and go. Does that create offside lines? No. Yeah, that's the same situation. Like that, that in theory should create. If I use that logic, should create an offside line. But it, it, so it, why do, why do we need to worry about that though? She's picked it up and she's gone. She's picked it on. She's going to take it to contact and create it's an like offside line. It's like but retreating players. And but they're still like, retreating. Yeah. So regardless of that, there was off offside lines. They're still not going to be, they're liable for penalty, but they're going to be retreating, so you're not going to penalise them anyway, unless they've stopped well, no, no. What, what, if they, like, what if they haven't actually retreated and they make a tackle, that's, that's what that would be. Well, if they tackle them in that zone, then that's, you'd get them anyway. No, no, because like, let's say she, so picks, if you're, she, she picks it so up, she's picking and the passes it off to her mate. If, if, if by her picking it up, you're saying that there's an offside line? No. Because no, well, no, there's no, no. Ruck form. no ruck. She didn't form the ruck. No, well, that, 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 that's, that's the question I'm asking. Okay, so the answer is no. Yeah, because she's yeah. never over the ball. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That, that, yeah that's, so, that's the yeah. clarification I wanted. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a ruck. That's a ruck. Yeah. Yeah. Or the that's, foot, that's or the foot not... over the top is the ruck. Yeah. Yeah. And, and is, what about the same if it's a, a, a defending player arriving, pick it up and go? Same. No, no ruck? No. That's no. A ruck. Yeah, that's a ruck. That's a ruck. That's not a ruck. Okay, that's all we want to check. Sweet. But if the jackal gets over the ball... If they get over the ball, that's a ruck, but yeah. if they actually just pick up the ball and go. Correct. You're not, right. you're, not, you're not going to give that ball to be easily so made. The ball the ball ball. No, right, I've got to say that. Yeah, sorry. Oh, well. If they get over the ball, but don't touch the ball, if they come over here, yeah. is that now a ruck? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 We don't. We won't hear that. We'll hardly hear that now. Yeah. We heard that a lot last year. We. Yeah. I don't reckon we'll hear that at all this year. Well, there will almost yeah. never be a tackle line unless there's a guy lying on the ground just from the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Because the first person who steps over or puts his hand down. Is yeah. Right. yeah. So what are the consequences for us as referees and ARs on this law? <laughs> so put your AR hat on for a moment. What does that mean for you? You've got to be in line with those. Those breakdowns straight yeah. away. So, you, so the work rate of the assistant referee now suddenly skyrocketed through the roof. Because last year, when it was a tackle only, you didn't have to bust your ass to get back on the D line. This year, you've got to be on the D line of every tackle now. Because literally, there's going to be a ruck formed virtually at every tackle. And remember, the referee will be able to pick up the close pillars offside. But whose responsibility is it to pick up the guy who never got back? <clears throat> whose responsibility is it to pick up the offside of the player that never got back on site? Yeah, it's that AR. <coughs> Especially the far side AR. Mm. So <coughs> your workload suddenly went nuts. Two more people on the run, please. Different people. This is me making you movie stars. <laughs> yeah. Tackle situation. Roll the other way. You put your legs out that way. Yeah. 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 This year, you have to hook it back to your team. It's pretty easy. You can't kick it out of the ruck. You've probably seen it a couple of times in the Super Rugby game, it's been penalised. But you can hook it back to your team. Penalty. Yeah, penalty for kicking it out of the ruck. So I think if you remember... Yeah, like when we trialled it, not last year, the year before those rules, that's what teams picked on, on pretty quickly, that you could just kick it out to prevent that ruck, well, to prevent anything happening, and then in Mitre 10, it went up a whole other level and it got kicked out probably every third or fourth ruck or so, so that from watching our competitions, we will really decided that that would be a way of doing what they wanted to do without making it look ugly. So 
So the cell is the uh, the tackle's player, yep. and the defenders came through and, and tried to rack it back, and she wasn't didn't roll out quick enough. You go in and penalise her for not rolling away. Especially as she prevented that counter rucking halfback from clearing quick ball. Because yeah. it happened last night in the Chiefs game where the Blues counter, uh, no, Liam Messer mm. counter rucked perfectly. And then a couple of other Chiefs players came in and joined him and then counter rucked further. There wasn't a lot of rucking per se, but they certainly shifted that off sideline back and a Blues player lying on the ground popped the ball. He was the ball carrier, the tackle player, popped the ball. So he got penalised. There was a Blues player who didn't move backwards with the counter ruck, so he ended up offside. So he, he also got penalised. And then there was another Blues player, as a result of the counter ruck, tried to kick the ball out. So there was literally, Ben O'Keefe had three penalties to choose from. And the irony is, Justin Marshall got neither of them. <laughs> How we're going to rule on it because I've got my own ruling on it. But if you had, say, a tackle, oh, I need some more volunteers. Newbies. Oh, oh, welcome too, Sam. Oh, <laughs> tackle. We're up to our arm. Anyway, I need a couple more too. Who wants to show? Someone else on the ground. The tackler. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Walk here. Uh, so you go on the ground. Ryan, you come to me. So he's, we're going to set a ruck, and you're going to try to blow me up. And then if Cam, you come in, and Sam, you pop the ball oh, up yeah. to Cam. OK, so Grant, you're going to clean out Jamie. So if I'm here. And after the clean out, Sam, you're going to yep. pop the ball. So if I'm here, keep closer. Pop. So what have we had? What, what did that scenario just create when Grant came in and cleaned out Jamie? So what's the player on the ground not allowed to do then? Play the ball more aggressive. Yeah. So you're going to see a look because these the teams aren't going to be familiar with the rules. So that's one way of getting that ball out there rather quickly. And we kind of noticed a little bit. In the yeah. And then I, I, I think it happens quite a lot as well. It happens on those instances, which I guess that's, for me, that's probably more a judgment call. But the worst ones is when a guy gets blown over, like that Chiefs example when he's still on the ground, then he pops it up because the other team's really won the ball and then he's or she's prevented them from getting it. So, yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm the same view as Jamie. If that happens, we, need, we should be yeah. pinging it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay for him to pop it if he just gets tackled and then pops in the, in the tackle? But once that ruck forms, but he's Once any form of clean-out happens yeah. over the top, his opportunity to pop is gone. Yeah, but but the ball carrier on the ground is the one most likely to pop it. Yeah. Yeah. So what would your big, your catchphrase be once you penalise them? Play on the ground. Play on the ground. Play must be on their feet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it'd be rough. And, and, and it'll, it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen quite too. So and that's just one thing that we know. Yeah, and because they they hit those breakdowns real hard because they're putting these people in and then they just throw it up and then. Especially with Simmons, it meant that you only needed to commit one play and this guy on the ground could pass it out like the halfback would pass it, so they easily got an overlap. So I wish it's the same with 15 as well. We played these rules two years ago in our Premier mm -hmm. so the Premier team should know what they're doing. It's when you get to those lower grades that some channels just get that ball up. Yeah, my game I had last weekend with one, well, one to one team and a Premier team, they were Pretty well over it. Yep. I think I got one for coming around the wrong side, just when they've got it from the tank. So they, they around the clubs, I think they know what's going on. Any questions? We covered, from, from the rack? We covered a couple more, from that if you're standing over it. Yep. yep. The only thing I wanted to talk about at the scrum was the change in the engagement interpretations. So two years ago, the engagement 
the crouch bind set core was on the bind call, they had, the teams had to remain disengaged, so they couldn't fully interlock their heads on the bind call. And so what we were allowing was either they maintained their weight on their feet and they kept a definite gap between head and shoulder, or they put their head on the shoulder but didn't engage and put their feet back so that they were at least leaning on each other. So we allowed that two years ago and then last year the interpretation changed that they could pre-engage on the bind call so long as it was even. And then you suddenly noticed in those June tests when the Northern Hemisphere referees came down here that they were not allowing the pre-engage. So we've gone back to what we were doing two years ago. And for those of you who watched the game that Angus Gardner refereed last night with the two Australian teams, he, he had to really work hard early because those teams were simply pre-engaging on the bind call. So, so not allowed to pre-engage. Pre You've got to have a definite space. And the easiest way to do that is to just get the two tight heads to put their heads on the shoulders but not engage. So there's a definite gap. And then on the set call, they tuck their chin in and their heads lock in nicely. That's what they're looking for again. Go back to what we were doing two years ago. Are there any telltale signs to be able to tell which team is pre-engaging? No, both they've, they'll both be doing it. Because one will do it and the other one says, shit, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it. So you just have a chance to break Yeah, you break them up. Free, free kick the team that does it first, it comes, if you have to. It comes down to your free talk, though. Yeah. You can, get, you can try and sort that out. And, it does, yeah, and like Pat said, it doesn't have to be a huge gap. So it can just be, sometimes they'll almost be there and the shoulders are about that far apart, yeah. and that's fine. But yeah, often they'll start doing the head thing, or even just like the very top will be head on, yeah. I mean, that much. But I mean, for us, it's just as long as there's a small gap. So when you say gap, teams will start setting up really far apart. And no other questions on global law trials. There is a website. So, so most of them we played under last year. Eh? We, the, so all of those global law trials that came in on the 1st of January last year are still in place this year. The ones we've gone through now were the only new ones that came in on the 1st of August and for us the 1st of January. Does that make sense? Alright, I'll just take uh, probably five, ten minutes break so we can reset up back in there and I'll run through the next session starting at 10 o'clock. <laughs>